we'd love participation, so I'm going to get started. Actually, first let me just let you know that we do have Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. I also have an Instagram page. I do Snapchat, but very poorly. I barely ever look at it. Um, so if you guys want to connect with us on that after this, I'd be more than happy. I would love it. It would be sweet. Um, we also have American clubs that we have a constitution course that we teach. And these are clubs where students like you can do an after school thing, have a club meeting. Keith said that he would buy you guys pizza every time you guys wanted to meet from like Little Caesars or whatever. And you can go through our curriculum. It's 12 lectures. It's fantastic. I really appreciate the encouragement. So just remember that and get up with me afterwards if you need to. Okay, I'm going to call on you each randomly, all right? So, young man, would you read this uh, phrase in the in the square, in the rectangle form? Finish wise are the result of years of scientific study combined with their experience over years. Very good. Nice work. How many F's are in this box? Count all the F's in there. Everybody else can do it too, but don't blurt out your answer. Six finished files are the results of years of scientific study combined with experience of years. So six S. See, it's really easy to overlook things. And I think oftentimes when it comes to the way that our government is supposed to work, we overlook a lot of things. So I'm trying to teach you guys to hone in that overlooking skill and start looking deep and critically. We're going to do an intelligence test. How many of each animal did Moses bring in the ark with him today? Not sure how many. How many? Two. Actually, I remember the story differently. Moses was like, I don't need an ark. Watch this. <laughs> Split the sea. Just walk. Noah had the ark. No animals with Moses. Is it possible to end a sentence with the word the? No. No? Yeah, Can you give me? No. Yes. It's not just possible. Did. I just did. The question oh, ends in the. Shit. Like, you could say, no, you can't end a sentence with the word the. But then you just did. What is the name of the raised print that deaf people use? Braille. Braille? That's blind people. What do deaf people use? They don't use. There is no raised print, is there? So deaf people can read. All right, spell the word shop. Young lady that's laughing at her. Can you spell the word shop for me? Wait, what kind of shop? Just write your own board of shop. Just say it out loud. S-H-O-P. One more time. S-H-O-P. What do you do at a green light? You? Ooh, don't follow her out of the parking lot. You get the green light. Stop. <laughs> Bam. All right, we're thinking now. Okay, I got phrases in a triangle. Young man, would you tell me what each phrase says? Read it out loud for me. Paris in the spring, bird in the fan, once in a lifetime. Try it again. Really slowly. Read it word for word. It's critical. Start right here. Paris. Paris in the the ocean. It's easy to overlook things, isn't it? Guys, we do this every day in our life. We've got to be careful. We've got to think critically. We've got to slow down. And that's what we're going to do, especially when we talk about this. Now, all of us talk. Uh, I loved it today in school. Today's Constitution Day. It's also my anniversary. And I'm going to introduce you to my wife soon. Uh, but in the preamble, when you all said it, when they recited it today, it told us why our founding fathers gave us the Constitution. It was to, let's say it together, secure the future generations and so do I and I want you to as well because someday you guys are going to become parents many of you many of you uh, will be able to raise kids and you'll be able to experience all the torture that you put your parents through I'm sorry I meant the love and fun that you guys give to your parents no but honestly my my my, uh, my son here gave a, a really good answer in his confirmation class my oldest one and the, 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 the pastor was there, and the little girl sitting next to my son said, Pastor, how did Dominic get so smart? And the pastor pointed to me in the back of the room. And he said, do you see that man back there? His wife. <laughs> so this is my wife. It's actually not my wife. It's just a picture of her. But um, horrible joke, sorry. That's my wife, Heather. She's back at home waiting. We're going to fly on an airplane at the end of today. The Fifth Amendment states this. Everybody read it together. <laughs> So really quickly, I do this quite a bit during this presentation. 
you have what I call LLP, and it's over here on this side, okay? When I point to you and I say LLP, I want you to repeat after me, life, liberty, property. Ready? LLP. Life, liberty, property. Those are fundamental rights guaranteed to us by the law of the land. There's not a higher law in our country than the Constitution. So that Constitution states, unless you've committed a crime, you cannot forfeit your life, liberty, or property. You can't go to jail, you can't be fined, you can't have things confiscated from you, you can't have capital punishment unless you've committed a crime. Now, how many of you believe in this room that we are born equal? Can you show me your hands? You're born equal. All of us are born equal. Yay! It's not true. You're not born equal. You're actually something much more special than being born equal. Let's read the Declaration of Independence. What does it say about this equality concept? We hold these truths. Keep on. Whoa, stop. Does it say that all men are born equal? Created equal. Created equal. When is a person created? Inside of the womb or outside of the womb? You guys go to the state fair, right? And you see cows deliver babies, calves, right? Is that calf on the outside of the womb and being created? And the cow walks and it just kind of floats with it? No, it's inside of it. Where is a human being created? In the womb. So you don't have to wait until you're born to have the right to LLP, you get that instantaneously when you are created. Therefore, it is illegal to take away your life while you are in your mother's womb, according to what we read. And these are the founding documents of America, and they're still the law of the land. Now, why in the world do we think we've gone crazy? We're on the crazy train. We think it's okay to take the life of somebody who's created with the right to life, liberty, and property in the womb. Why do we do that in America now? Did something happen? Like in 1973, one of our branches of government, we have three, one of our branches of government said, no, it's okay, you can take the life of a human being in the womb. No problem, because we said so. Does anybody know what branch of government that is? Starts with Supreme. The judicial branch said it's okay to take a life. Should we listen to them? I ask you a question. You're at a football game, Ohio State game, of course. They're playing Old Miss, okay? And uh, Old Miss is just getting beat. It would never happen. But let's just say that they were. 50 to zip, halftime. The refs come out and they say, oh, this will not do. Ohio State, this is way unfair. Poor Old Miss is getting there pants beat off them, the fans are hating it. We're going to change the rules. We're going to say it's okay now for Old Miss to have 12 downs to convert to a first, but Ohio State, you only get two downs. Would we let the referees change the rules of football? No. No! Heck no! You are hired for one job, bro, and that's to apply the rules to the two parties in front of you. That's all a judge does. That's all a court does. They apply the law the two parties in front of them. So what they ought to have done is said, no, every created person has the right to life. That's what the law says. Therefore, we are going to enforce the law, but rather, we have what's called judicial activism. They think, we can change the law. People will listen to us. And we have tried to And multiple millions of people have been killed in the womb. Your future cousins, brothers, sisters, friends. That's what's happened in your country. Because we didn't pay attention. Remember in the beginning I was doing those IQ tests so you guys could read and think critically? You gotta pay attention. It's super important. We're created. Now, everybody wants rights, and everybody, we can all agree on the fact that we want our rights. You want your right to life, right? How many of you have a vehicle? Anybody? Yeah. You want your right to your vehicle. What do you drive? Uh, Honda Accord. Honda Accord. Well, buddy, today after school, I'm gonna take your Honda Accord and never give it back. It's a free country, buddy! I have a right to your Honda Accord. What would that be if I took your Honda Accord? It'd be stealing. Because a right is something I have the freedom to exercise, but I don't have the freedom to break the law. It's not freedom. Free country, sucker! Not freedom. Okay, so freedom must be inside of the law. It's in, in the confines of the law. In other words, the law hasn't said thou shalt not do it, therefore I have freedom to do it, right? What is that law? 
The law of nature, nature's God. Can everybody say that together? The law of nature, nature's God. I'm going to show you in a second that that is written in the Declaration of Independence. But in the old days, like in the old days, they used to build a city. Does anybody know what they would build around the city to protect it? A wall. It was huge, right? There's your wall. This wall represents the law, okay, for this analogy. The city represents your rights, something valuable, something you need protected. Government's job is to be this wall and uphold the law so that when somebody who comes from outside of the law comes in to break the law, bam, they're stopped instantaneously and your rights are protected. Your rights to LLP, that's the government's job. So what happens if I decide, you know what, I want to go outside of the law and operate out here. I become what's called an out law. Does the law protect me now or does it come after me? Right. Because I become an out law. We want to be inside of the law. If you're in the law, and by the way, let's think about this. What law protects your right to life? It keeps me from killing you. Thou shall not Pretty, I mean, it's so easy, isn't it? It's like, oh, duh, man, you can't kill it, right? What protects your right to property, your car? What law says that I can't steal your car, thou shall not? Thou shall not steal. Pretty good law. You guys like those laws? They don't hate anybody, they don't hurt anybody, they protect people, just like that law. So if it's against the law of nature, and nature's God, you don't have a right to do it because you don't have the right to do what's wrong. This is not freedom to break the law. That's not freedom. That's crime. Freedom is only inside of the law. The Declaration of Independence states this very phrase that we found it necessary to dissolve the political bands that connected us with Britain right here. And to assume the powers of the earth, the separate and equal station to which, what does this say? The law of the in other words, what they said is, hey, there's a law and a God that's bigger than kings and political systems that has given us LLP. And they wrote it down in a document so we all could read it and make sure that our government never went beyond these bounds. Because if they go beyond these bounds, they're going outside of the law, and the government's not law. Let me ask you a question. Say I'm a police officer. Police officers don't get paid a whole lot of money. Love. Other police officers, man, I got like three kids. I need some more money. You know, I bust drug dealers all day. We've got all these drugs here. Why don't I just sell some of them and then I'll have enough money to provide for my family? Yeah, I'm gonna sell drugs. So instead of busting people, he's like, hey, yo, I got like twice as much as you got. Here, I'll sell it to you. Is that legal for a cop to do that? Well, let's just say that somebody says, hey, you can't do that. He says, I can too. I got a badge. Does that badge make what he's doing legal? No, he's still an outlaw. He's held accountable for his crimes. Just because government does something doesn't make it right. It's outside of these laws that our founding fathers. Matter of fact, this guy besides having a great hairdo, his name's William Blackstone. He put together in volumes called The Laws of Nature, The Common Laws of England. And our court system there's judgment by these laws. And he was the foremost authority at the time of our founding, okay? You may even learn about him today, or uh, in your class. He said, no one acting a man can be considered law unless it conforms to the law of God. Oh, that's right. And that law that he's talking about is the law of nature and nature's God. Now, on the tip of the Supreme Court, I'm a horrible drawer, the Supreme Court building. There is a man up there, this is my man, he's got a nice flowing beard, Matter of fact, you'll see pictures of him and the tablets that he has in his hand in your Ohio Supreme Court building. By the way, every single state constitution acknowledges that our rights come from God. All 50 of them, by the way, there's not 57 states, there's 50. So all 50 of them, Moses is at the top of the Supreme Court with those two tablets because that law protects our LLP. Let me say it again. So where did I get this concept? I want to develop for you what's called an American view of law and government. This is what makes us different than the rest of the world because of what we believe and how we govern ourselves. 
the Declaration of Independence. Let's read it together. We hold these truths stop right there. So we have a creator that created us. That means there's got to be a God. We're going to call him God. That's generally what we call him. Somebody creates you. They, they are the God. So that's the highest authority, the creator. And the highest authority, the creator God, gave you what? <laughs> Among these are life, liberty, LLP again. There you go. And what is the purpose of government? That to secure these rights says deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, which is why we democratically elect, but we are not a democracy, because the majority cannot determine. Let's just say that we're going to go back to my friend here. Hey, I want to take his Honda Accord. I can't do it. So this is what I think. Well, what if I can get the whole class to vote in favor with me? And I'm poor, and I have, I have so many problems. I just, I can't afford my own car. So I need a car. Will you guys please vote with me that I can have the right to steal his car? No. Please? And let's say a majority of you buy that sappy story. Does that make it legal for me to steal his car? No. Even if we collectively agree that we can? No! Because the creator said he has a right to property and I can't break that law. Even if a majority says it. That's why we're not a democracy. The majority can't determine what is right and wrong. It's already been determined in the law of nature and nature. So as Americans, we believe this, which keeps us sane, which keeps us free, which keeps us safe, which allows us to prosper. What happens? And as Americans, we believe that there is a God. We just read it in the Declaration of Independence. There is a God. That declaration is sitting down in the archives building. I try to go there every time I'm in D.C. and look at it. It's massive. It's awesome. John Hancock right there. Bam! A target on his back. So let the king see this. Stroke it. And it looks so nice. It's John Hancock. It's very nice. So there's a God. So it makes us an American. How many of you guys are American in here? So you guys all believe, let's say it together, there is a God. There is a God. It's not government. Our rights come from him. Our rights come from him. The purpose of civil government is to secure God-given rights. The purpose of civil government is to secure God-given rights. All summed up in that document I just showed you. It's exactly what it says. That's what it is to be American. If you serve in office and you don't believe this, then you have no business being in office. We should not elect people into office that don't believe this. Now, when we get to rights, this gets important, okay? Let me just say, remember we were talking about the court changing the rules and so on and so forth. Let's just say that I'm in government, okay? And I want to have a new right. And I'm going to lobby all my superhero friends and all the people across America because I want the right. <coughs> I've always wanted it as a kid, and I know you want it too. I want the right to fly. How many of you want the right to fly? Wouldn't it be fun to fly? What if I could say I can make you fly? How many of you would be down with that? Yeah. Go ahead, show me your hands. Okay, sweet. So what is stopping me from flying right now? I know I can. We've got to change that. So we're going to do that. What is stopping me from flying? What is holding me to the ground? Gravity. Ah, stinking gravity. Oh, we'll make gravity illegal. Gravity hates you. You know that. It hates girls. It will never let you fly. It hates people of color because it'll never let them fly. It hates Muslims. It can't let them fly. It hates everybody. It doesn't let us fly. For 200 and some years in America, we have been discriminated against it. By gravity. So we're going to get rid of it. Yeah. So I go to my colleagues in Congress, you vote for me. Let us fly. Let us fly. Let us fly. And this is the campaign posters. And I convince all those knuckleheads in Congress to pass a law that makes gravity illegal. And now you have the right to fly. So they give it to us. And you know how this goes, right? The, the, the Senate has to confirm after the House does it. They do. They're like, yeah, all day long. I want to fly, too. That'd be sweet. Let's do it. People love it. We've been polling the people, and 1,000 out of 1,000 people want to fly. Okay, great. Goes to the president. The president looks at it. What president wouldn't want to be the first president to lead his people to flight? Kennedy brought us to the moon. He brings us to flight. So the president signs it. Could you imagine him with the cape and his orange hair flowing? 
The president signs it in. It goes to the courts. The courts are like, wow, I better look at this. This seems a little bit irate. Well, the people really want it. In fact, they listen to everything we say anyways. We're just like the refs changing the rules. It's awesome. Yeah, we're living and evolving as a people. I think it's time we evolve into the ability to fly. <coughs> Give us the right to fly. Tomorrow morning, we get up on top of one of the skyscrapers in Dayton. I let you go first because I'm the politician. What's going to happen when you jump? Gravity. What? Gravity? No, we got rid of that hateful, disgusting, despicable law. Gone. We made it illegal. No more gravity in America. What's going to happen? You can because it's a law of nature. Like, what? I can't get rid of the law of nature? I'm the government, bro. Yeah, but it's got to give it rain. It's one thing you can do. I wouldn't call it liberty. You have the stupidity to jump. <laughs> but you don't, you can't change the law. The law is going to break you, isn't it? No matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter what the court says, no matter what the government says, no matter what the president says, no matter what the lobby group says, no matter what Twitter says, no matter, it doesn't matter because there is a fixed law. And we have fixed rights. And God has placed them. And because of that, we can look at that and say, oh, that would be a bad idea because of that we can identify clearly what rights really are. Rights can't break the laws. Creation or evolution? Are we created equal or does the document say we hold these truths to be self-evident all men evolve equal? I mean eventually you'll be on the same scale as her because she's clearly evolved more than the rest of us. Beautiful package of that. Creation says you're created instantaneously with LLP. Life, liberty, and property. What happens if we wait till you evolve? Hey, someday you'll get there, buddy. Anybody remember that that track runner that won like four Olympic gold medals uh, in Berlin at the Olympics? Super fast guy went to Ohio State. Jesse Owens. Jesse Owens. Jesse Owens wins the medals, <laughs> and at that time, it's customary that the leader of the country comes to the awards ceremony. Did Adolf Hitler show up for Jesse Owens? state, the government is the divine, the god. They determine what's going on. They create new things, invent stuff. They give you the right to fly. It's amazing. He didn't show up because he said it's not fair for his people to run against those animals. He thought black people were animals. They hadn't evolved enough. See, when you put government on top and make them god, they come up with all sorts of crazy stuff. Trust me, just read a history book. They have unlimited authority. They can do whatever they want, and what are you going to do about it, right? leads to state worship, where you look to them and ask their permission for everything. You know what our founding fathers said when the King of England tried to do that? Uh, no, we have guns, and we're not going to put up with this. So if you want to attack us, we will defend ourselves. This was not offensive, by the way. It wasn't we went after him. We signed a Declaration of Independence, we explained our case, and we said we will now defend our God-given rights. Which was the purpose that our founders lay down their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor for us. If we worship anything other than the God that gave us everything, it's going to tyrannize us. And this class system is going to develop. Prime example of this, guys, if I'm just going to say this, so I'm not getting political because we're not political. I don't care which which party you, you claim with or anything. I just say vote constitutional. This last in the last decade or so, we've got what's called universal health care. Anybody heard of it? Some people called it Obamacare, this is health care thing. Did you know that it was required for us to do it? But guess who didn't have to do it? Congress. They made us do something they wouldn't even do themselves. Does that sound like they think they're equal with us? No. That's horrible. That's tyranny, guys. We have what's called a biblical view of government. We got it out of the book, the law of nature, nature's God. He wrote it all down for us. He said, hey, listen, I gave government right here. The job is to protect your rights. I limited their authority. It's limited. How many of you love our veterans? Why do you love our veterans? Because they uh, risk their lives to save us. They risk their lives to save us. Exactly. Why do you love our veterans? Let's go a little bit further than that. What else do our veterans?
Fight for our freedoms. Fight for our freedoms. And both the things you guys just described, we could actually hire a bodyguard to do. But what makes our veterans super special? They're not only willing to risk their lives, they're willing to give their lives, aren't they? Yeah. Do our veterans ever tyrannize us? No, they're just looking for the first person that's threatening their life, liberty, and property, and they're ready to take them out. I love that. You love that? I get patriotic, man. When I see them in the street with their hats, I shake their hands at the parade, I stand for our veterans. Right, guys? Yeah. They're making this possible. They're the wall protecting our rights. I even give extra money to our veterans. I don't know if any of you have heard around the dinner table, around April 15th, if your parents have ever said, well, honey, this is awesome. We get to pay our taxes this year. Let's pay about $3,000 extra because I just love what they're doing up on Capitol Hill. Have any of your parents ever sent extra money for taxes? No, probably because why? Our veterans are over here with the Republic, not thinking themselves better than you, but actually willing to serve you to the point of dying for you because they know that we're all created equal. But when it comes to tax time, we get a little skeptical because I think too many of our guys up there at Capitol Hill are operating over here, right? They're better than us. George Washington said this in his farewell address, and it used to be in school textbooks. I'm not sure if it is in your textbook now, but I encourage you to read this. I've got a little book. Uh, it's just a little teeny one, probably take you 15 minutes. After he became president, the first president under this constitution, he had some feedback for the country that he wanted to share with everybody. He was the first guy that did it. It'd be like the first guy who went to the moon. We'd read his memoirs. You know, what was it like? What did you learn? So on and so forth. That's what Washington did. He said, of all the dispositions and habits which lead to political prosperity, you want your politics to prosper, then you need religion and morality as their supports. In any building, and this is pretty common sense, what do you need to uphold that building? You need some strong, firm pillars. You need that foundation and the pillars that are erected up to keep the strength of the building. What happens if you knock out the pillars? Even if the foundation's strong, if those pillars get knocked out, whole building collapses. So what Washington is saying, and this is very important, those pillars are your religion and morality, your behavior, your love that you have for one another, your ability to identify what the law is and to secure others, LLP. That's what makes you great, Washington. So that's what makes your political institution prosper. It's not making things like gravity illegal or going against those laws that were created to protect them. In vain were a man claimed tribute to patriotism. He said, you can't even be a patriot if you labor against religion and morality. You're not American. You're not a patriot. 